Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about strategies for reducing the stress you might be having about sleep. Sleep comes up often as a trouble spot for people, not only with anxiety, but just in general life. Having trouble falling asleep or staying asleep is the result of a series of life choices that can snowball together to yield night after night of tossing and turning, but it doesn't have to be that way. Nothing feels more distressing than to be looking at the clock and being anxiety-ridden with how few hours we have left to get our much-needed sleep. People are looking for what to do when they're awake in the middle of the night, and they often resort to using, I'm going to say it, your phone, (laughs) or their phone, or our phone, however we want to look at it. Although I won't put myself in that category because I don't do that, and I don't do it because I understand what that does to us. So people are looking for what to do when they wake in the middle of the night. And like I said, they often resort to using their phone as a distraction from the pain of being awake in the pre-dawn hours. While there are different schools of thought on handling this pre-dawn time when we are awake and in the bed, I like to focus on how to avoid it all together. It's like the band-aid of thinking about what should I do when I'm lying there awake, when what we really want to do is clean and heal the wound so that we don't have to deal with it anymore. Now, as a side note, I find for occasional night waking that you stay in the bed and do not use any light, especially your cell phone, your tablet, or a reading light. And even try to keep your eyes closed. The darkness actually signals that it is time for us to let go and drift off to sleep. This is actually a perfect time to practice meditation. And if you can't meditate during the day because it causes you sleepiness, this is the perfect time for you to practice. Use the night waking hours as your new time to practice and let sleep come. Notice I said, let sleep come. We cannot try to fall asleep. All we can do is set up the right conditions for our mind and body to drift off into sleep. The more we try, the more elusive sleep becomes. If you have chronic insomnia, this is best discussed with your healthcare team just to be sure that you don't have physical or medication issues that are causing your night wakefulness. That's not something we can handle here. We are talking in generalities, and I am talking about actually the best place to put your attention and your efforts is to set yourself up for the best sleep possible. So how do we set ourselves up to sleep through the night naturally and wake up refreshed in the morning? First off, I want to say, don't panic. Now I know that's easier said than done, but it is vital that you pay attention to where you are responding or reacting, right? This is a place that we want to respond and not react. Let it be okay that you are awake. It's okay. 
and remind your mind that you are safe and that even missing sleep is not an emergency. If you're an anxious person, you will probably react by going to the worst case scenario, triggering your fight or flight and really waking yourself up again. Now, this may take some practice, but if you practice in meditation during the day and with the small irritations and discomforts that come in daily life, you'll be able to easily pull up this calming message in the middle of the night. You want to be able to tell yourself over and over again with life's little discomforts and irritations, This is not an emergency. I'm okay. This too shall pass. I can handle this. And let your body physically relax. We practice this in meditation on purpose, and then we learn to practice it off the cushion, being out into the world. And when these little things come up, we tell ourselves we are okay. We can handle this. It is not an emergency. And the more you do that with the little discomforts and the little irritations, the more you will be able to respond in the middle of the night by saying, this too is okay. I don't like it. It's not what I want, but I'm okay. This is not an emergency. We need to calm the amygdala back down again. And again, like I said, this is going to take some practice. But you do have to convey the message that even though you are awake, you are safe, you are cozy, and this is not an emergency or something that needs to be solved. It is a time to relax, to let go, to be glad that no one needs your attention and that you can let go and allow sleep to come back if it will. Don't even put any pressure on it. Let it go. Even if you cannot fall back to sleep, and now the more we try, the less apt we are to be successful. You know that. It will become more and more elusive. We cannot try and will ourselves to go to sleep. We must allow it to come. But even if you can't fall back to sleep, just remind yourself that it's okay. Let it be okay. Experiment with this. Yes, you'll be more tired than usual the next day, but it is not an emergency. We have taken everything in our lives to be this life or death emergency. When we are anxious, that's the cutting edge we are on. It's either life or death in our mind. It is not reality. So we have to pull ourselves back to reality. It is not what we want. It is uncomfortable, but we are okay. We can handle this. So much stress is caused by the what ifs around not sleeping. People build up all kinds of stories and visions in their mind of what is going to happen and how horrible it is. We can do a lot of good by calming the mind instead. Yes, we can do a lot to keep the mind from racing down the wormhole. That's our job to bring ourselves back into the state of non-emergency, the state of neutral. We don't like it, but it's okay. We can handle it. The next thing that I want to talk about that you can work on so that we are not waking in the middle of the night and having to deal with not panicking is to set your body's internal clock. This is the natural clock or rhythm that we have, but we can easily interfere with it by allowing light into our lives when it is not good for us. There are times when we want to expose ourselves to light and times we want to expose ourselves to darkness. This internal clock 
is the one that dictates when you wake up and when you are going to feel tired. It's dictated by a 24-hour cycle of day and night. We are humans. We cannot escape this. Some people are better at working around it and working things like night shift, and other people are not. Find where you are at and give yourself what you need in order to be in a state of ready for sleep when it is dark. When this part of our brain area where our 24-hour cycle is located, this little part of our brain, it operates the body's master clock for the whole body to produce more or less of the sleep hormone melatonin. During the day, you produce less melatonin, so you feel energized and alert. At night, you produce more melatonin, so you feel sleepy. That's why the light exposure during the day is what we need. That's why we need to be outside during the day so that we can have sunlight, even on a cloudy day, without it being filtered through a window, car window or house windows. This natural light exposure during the day can help you sleep better. The earlier, the better. And it doesn't take a lot of time to do this light exposure. Ten minutes looking toward the east in the morning, even on a cloudy day, will be a great help. When Brazilian researchers, I'll post the link to the research paper in the show notes. When the Brazilian researchers compared Workers who had windows in their office, workers whose offices were windowless, the results were striking. Now this was even light through windows. So I'm telling you, if you get outside, you can get away with a lot less time. But obviously, if the light is coming through the window, you're going to need a lot more. Anyway, back to the researchers. They compared workers who had windows in their offices to workers whose offices were windowless. And the results were striking. Compared to the windowless workers, workers with windows had lower levels of melatonin at 8 a.m. when they needed to be alert for work. So that's a good thing. What's more, they had higher levels of melatonin at 10 p.m., when it was time to start winding down for the night. And they tended to sleep better and reported fewer depressive symptoms than their windowless counterparts. The opposite is also true. If darkness signals your body to produce more sleep-promoting melatonin, too much exposure to light at night might leave you tossing and turning And this is why you are having trouble. The light and darkness is the key to setting the body's internal clock. So you have to take control of this. If you don't have to do shift work, you can be on the schedule of the sun, which will help you eliminate sleep disturbances. If your melatonin is low, you will wake up in the middle of the night. So how do you get more natural melatonin? You get out in the sunlight. And the reason why I'm not saying take the melatonin as a supplement, which you can do, and if you are super struggling, yes, try that. It will be a good help to you. But the reality is, like, what are we going to find in 10 years that we didn't know now about being out in the sun? We're going to find something. So we're humans. We are naturally built to follow the cycle of the sun, get some early morning sunlight. It can't be harmful. And if you have to get it only through the windows, such as this Brazilian research that was done, you will probably need more. But thank goodness that if you can get that, if you have to go out to walk to your car in the morning, maybe you can pause for five minutes before you get into your car while you're outside. 
Yes, even in the cold, snow, gloomy weather, that light that is coming through the clouds is very important for you. So try to get 10 minutes of it. See if it can make a difference. If you are having difficulty sleeping, that's an awful thing. I only struggled with it once in my life, knock on wood, and I understand it's dreadful. But if this is your problem, please take it upon yourself to do everything that you can to help your mind and body so that it does not need to be waking up in the middle of the night and see if you can get yourself more on this regular cycle with the sun rising early so that maybe you can step outside and get those few minutes of light before you go on and get in your car and then off to another building somewhere. It can be really, really helpful. You will be more tired at night. You will be ready to turn the lights out and go to sleep. Now, you know, I am going to harp just one more time on the idea of not having artificial light when it is dark outside. You know, I put low lights on in the house. I don't even have overhead lights. See if you can do that. That will be helpful. You know, have a lamp instead of an overhead light. Try to have them be a little bit dimmer, not as bright. Have them be a little more yellow and not that bright, clear white. They can all be helpful. And do not have the screens. At least turn them off an hour or two before you are going to be closing your eyes for sleep. If you are having difficulty sleeping through the night. If you don't have trouble with it, yay, hat tip to you, and you can continue on with what you're doing. But if you are that sensitive that you are waking up in the middle of the night and it is causing you distress, please turn your screens off one to two hours before you want to go to bed. It's a great experiment. Why wouldn't you try it? It's what your body is craving is more darkness before you're going to bed so that you can stay asleep and more light, more brightness very early in the morning when you first awaken. And the last point I want to make is that if you have been having trouble sleeping, you may have jumped into taking naps, right? So I want you to keep any naps to a 20-minute maximum. Try to avoid them altogether if you can, but if you are that tired, you know, we have found that 10 to 20 minutes has been shown actually, to be the most effective at reducing daytime sleepiness and boosting cognitive performance. So that nice short nap can be helpful and it won't interrupt your nighttime sleep. Knowing the power that we have to correct our habits so that we can let the natural flow of sleep and wakefulness come through us is empowering. Yes, We can look at our screens at all hours of the night as a diversion to sleeplessness, but what are we accomplishing in the long run? We are only confusing our internal clocks further. Let yourself be with the initial sleep disruption from a bad day or ongoing stress without panic and keep yourself in a dark environment so that you are not going to interrupt the natural melatonin hormonal flow and therefore set yourself up for ongoing sleep disruption. I have a couple of other episodes on sleep that you may want to listen to if you haven't heard them already. They are 497, that's how to reduce anxiety and enjoy better sleep. 409, Meditation for Better Sleep, and 183, Sound Sleep Tips for When You Have Anxiety. I know you guys are set in your ways, but sleep is so important and we really do have the power to make a difference in our sleep. And now for today's quote. A well-spent day brings happy sleep, and that's from Leonardo da Vinci. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. 
Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com. 